Hey everyone. Um, all I have to say is how excited we are to be able to see you this coming Sunday. And so that means what we're going to do is we're going to have a 9 a.m. service and an 11 a.m. service. And we have missed you so much. And we are so excited to see what God has in store for us this Sunday. So we hope to see you there. But if not, we totally understand too. Um, make sure you're checking us out online if you can't be there in person. But for now, all we have is right now. And tonight I want to talk to you about how to get up with a purpose. Um, I know we were all doing a thing that we used to call normal life and I got up with a purpose every day and my purpose was to teach third graders how to read. That was my purpose. It's what made me get up in the mornings and go into school and try to be the best teacher I could be. That was what I felt like I was called to do. But however all of that has changed and sometimes it was hard to get up and feel like I had a purpose I don't know about you guys but it was kind of like man I'm still teaching but it's virtually and that's not the best when you have third graders it's more like show and tell and oh Miss Morissette look at this or whatever they could possibly come up with so I didn't really feel like I was impacting their lives as much as I was in a classroom and my other passion and calling is to be a youth pastor, and yeah, I could still do that, but it's all virtually. I can't like talk to you guys in person and give you hugs and be like your supporter like I want to be, so it was hard, and at times it was like, man, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Is, is this my purpose? And I, so, however, tonight though, I want to talk to you, what does it mean to get up with a purpose? Um, before I begin, I want to pray because if God doesn't help me get through this, my nerves will get in the way. I'll also go off into left field. So if you will, bow your heads with me and let's just pray. Dear God, I just thank you for this evening. I thank you for the people that are tuning in to hear your word. Dear God, I pray that you can use me because and take me out of the equation because without you, God, I am nothing. I, I will mess up. I will say the wrong thing. So God, I just invite you into this place, into our homes, and I pray that you just open our hearts to receive the message that you have tonight and open our ears to listen to your words and to what you have to say tonight. And I just thank you. Use me and let me be used by you, dear God. And I just... God, just thank you. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. I thank you how you're using this for your good. And I pray that this Sunday we come ready, refueled, and on fire for you, dear God. And just use me tonight, dear Jesus. Let everything step aside and let you come through. And in your name I pray. Amen. So, to explain my thoughts, I want to turn to a story about a man named Saul, who we mostly know as Paul. So, Saul, before I get started, I'm going to kind of give you some background information, because sometimes I think we just kind of assume y'all know everything, and that's not always the case, and there's that's nothing wrong with that. So, just bear with me as I kind of give you some background knowledge about Saul. So, Saul was a Roman citizen, and he was from a Jewish family. Um... And for some of you, I know you're like, blah, 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 blah. Come on, let's get to the point. But there is a reason for this background information. Saul was raised slash kind of trained to grow up to be a Pharisee. And Pharisees were trained to know all about the religious laws and the coming Messiah. Saul also made tents for a living. Like This was his job. And some of us could see this as Saul's purpose. And just like, that's the end of the story. But... This is just where our story is getting started. The more we learn about Saul, the more us Christians are like, man, this man is crazy. He wants to kill all of us. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself, so let's keep, let's keep talking. So here's the thing. Saul didn't believe that Jesus, a Nazarene, was the risen one that everyone said was coming. He thought Jesus was a false prophet, and here's why. The Pharisees believed in a Davidic king. They believed that he would be a ruler over Israel, the Jewish nation, not a friend of the Gentiles, and a bunch of sinners. Jesus also broke a lot of laws in their minds. For example, he mingled with tax collectors. Um, he ate lunch with unclean hands. He ate lunch. I just kind of added that in there. It basically just says he ate with unclean hands. <laughs> he probably did eat some lunch, but probably some other meals too. He broke the Sabbath law by healing people, which to us that probably sounds crazy, but 
to them, the Sabbath was you did nothing. That was your day of rest. And so that was breaking the law. So Saul sought to end the followers of Christianity. He didn't believe this man was called the Messiah or was the so-called Messiah that he had learned about. In Acts, Saul sets out on a road to Damascus to end Christianity, in whatever it means. He believed what he was doing was right and just. This is just like some of us while we're living in our sin. We feel as though what we are doing is fine. It's just right. It's no big deal. I mean, everyone else is doing it, and they seem just fine. But in reality, we are missing something. When we live a life of sin, we're missing our true purpose. But what is a purpose? I know my definition of a purpose, but I wanted to know yours. So I polled everybody in our group, me, and if you participated, you're awesome. If you didn't, try to participate next time. But um, here's what some of you had to say. When you have a purpose, it's consistent with your motivations. Um, your purpose is your daily goals in life. It's simply like take like waking up in the morning and getting going. Um, your purpose can guide you to your life decisions, influence your behavior, and also offer a sense of direction and create a meaning in your life. And I loved your responses, but whenever I started to think about my personal response as to what is a purpose, I think about two types. We have our personal purpose and we have our like godly purpose. And it's not wrong to have a personal purpose, but sometimes it can blind us from our godly purpose. And I have an example of that in my life where um, for years I had my own personal purpose and that was something most people would have looked at me and said, that's your natural gift. God gave you that talent. And he did, but my personal purpose was to continue on playing travel ball and one day play D1 softball on a full ride scholarship. I mean, any athlete, that's their dream is to make it to the next level and then to maybe even the next level after you've spent all that hard work and dedication um, through everyday practices and everything. But uh, it just wasn't working out. And no, I didn't get injured and I, that I, to where I couldn't play. Um, my desire to play didn't change, but what did change was God's purpose in my life. He came through and he changed my course. And with my pur personal purpose and with all purposes, there comes a cost. And my cost was that I really couldn't be involved in church because literally I was playing, every, I was practicing or playing every week of what felt like every month um, and so I was never able to truly join youth group I was never truly able to be there on every Sunday or be and I love to sing so and I couldn't really be on the praise team because we were always gone and I love dramas and I could never be a part of our youth drama so I constantly felt like man I'm missing something and it was like but I have all this so I'm okay I'm okay and so I would just keep going I'd keep going my, with what I thought God had given me a talent in and he truly did but it wasn't my purpose in life and so when God started changing that I started changing I wanted more I wanted a deeper relationship I wanted to be more involved in church and it was all because he was destining me for my calling and so but now I'm getting ahead of myself so let's get back so what I did with my purpose is I quit um, and some people are like, whoa, you're going to regret that decision. And I'm like, nah, I really don't. Because when God calls you into his purpose for your life, yes, there's going to be a sacrifice. But that reward of that purpose is so much greater. So let's get back to Saul. Saul's per personal purpose was to end all Christianity. He is following his purpose with some when something happens. So Go ahead. Let's take out your Bibles. We're going to read in Acts chapter 9. So for all my people at home that are hopefully getting those Bibles out, you might have to blow the dust off of them. Or maybe you're like me and you're just using your phone. But I want you to turn to Acts chapter 9. I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. And I don't think I said this, but the title of my message today is Get Up With a Purpose. So if you're taking some notes, write this verse down and go back and study it yourself. So we're going to start with verse 1 in chapter 9. And it says, Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues 
synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring both men and women back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. I want to stop right here because Saul already knew who was talking to him. He even said, um, let me find it. He said, who are you, Lord? He already knew in the question. He says, who are you, Lord? He already knew. And that's just like with some of us. We already know when God is talking to us, but we're just choosing not to listen. We're being like Saul. We're determined to do what we want to do. So we're just like, mm, I hear you, God, but I'm not going to do it. So let's keep reading. So we're going to start with chapter 6. And we're going to, or not chapter 6, verse 6, read through verse 11. So follow along with me if you have your Bible. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The man with stall, Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the the hands to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now, there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling, Ananias, yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over straight Go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. So it was no secret to those around who Saul was. Everyone knew that he was bent on destroying Christians. So I am not upset with Ananias' reaction. I completely understand it. But let's keep reading. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings, as well as the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. Even though Ananias knew Paul, or Saul was coming to destroy all Christians, he did as the Lord told him. He put his fear aside and put his faith and trust in the Lord and did what God told him. So let's keep reading um, verses 17 through 19. So when Ananias went and found Saul, he laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fall, fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterwards, he ate some food and regained his strength. So a lot has happened to Saul in only 19 verses. A man with his own purpose and mission set out to end Christianity. He thought what he was doing was right. He thought it was his purpose. But God meets him in the middle of his self-inflicted um, destruction and gives him a new purpose. Saul alone couldn't find... Oh, sorry, I lost my place, guys. Saul alone couldn't find his purpose until he found out who his God was. If you could have asked Saul, he would have given you the generic answer that most of us give. I mean, he was trained to be a Pharisee. He knew the laws and he knew right from wrong. But the problem was is he knew the do's and don'ts, but he didn't know or have a relationship with the one who gives us life and a purpose. So whenever he had an encounter with God, his purpose changed. Just like with Saul, God wants to change your purpose. So many of you may feel as though your purpose has been stripped away. 
you have messed up too many times for God to use you and you and to give you a new purpose but that's not true at all that's exactly what the enemy would want you to believe that you've went too far that you've messed up too much for God to even care about you or to give you something new and clean but that's what God's designed to do for us he's he's not going to take us as we are he's going to make us new he's going to make us clean and make us worthy of what he's asking us to do and that's how much he loves us and that's the awesome part of it so whenever he had an encounter with God his purpose changed and so tonight God wants to let you know that it's time to get up like Saul like he did on the road to Damascus he got up changed and for Saul it took him being blinded on a road to change his course and that's what god does he takes whatever to help us get back on course and to be able to get up with a purpose he breathes life into us where we feel hopeless he gives hope where all we see is depression he gives love when all we have ever felt is rejection he says live when all we can feel is and say is i just don't know anymore god is saying you saying to you tonight get up and give and let me give you your purpose some of you are saying tonight madison i know my purpose well i want to challenge you to seek god seek god in this and make sure it's his purpose because there was nothing wrong with my personal purpose i mean that was what i had trained to do my whole life i still love jesus i still went to church when i could and i felt like there was nothing wrong with it but when the more i asked god to show me his plans for my life the more they were going in two totally different directions because when God gives us a purpose, he doesn't leave us the way he found us. And so when God found me, I was a shy teenager who would never have envisioned ever standing or right now I'm speaking into a camera witnessing to students. I was too nervous for that. I, I would have literally thrown up on you if you would have asked me to stand in front of people. And so God, he took this shy little kid and turned me into someone who wants to come and to talk to you guys and show you love. And he changed my purpose for the better. With Saul, I wanted to go back to the story for a few minutes. He completely changed him. Saul went from having the reputation of wanting to end all Christ Christianity to a man named Paul. And this man, the one that was changed by Jesus forever, instead of wanting to end Christianity, he was wanting to proclaim it to the whole world. He wanted to proclaim the goodness of God and what his God had done for him. So God not only changed his name, he gave him a new identity, a new worth, and most importantly, a new purpose. Paul's new purpose is similar to what God requires all of us to do, and that is basically to share the love and word of Jesus Christ each and every day. And so tonight, I want to ask you, are you like Saul, living your own personal purpose? Or are you ready to be like Paul? Because Paul, when he gets up from the road of Damascus, and yes, it's later that he changes his name, but when he gets up in those and he goes and he meets Ananias, and when Ananias touches him and he's filled with the Holy Spirit and he can see again, he's not left the same and God's not going to leave you the same because if you're wanting to transform your life tonight and get up with a new purpose, that's exactly what God's going to do for you. He's going to transform you. He's going to give you a new identity and you're going to be getting up with a new purpose. So I know for myself, when I followed after God's perfect purpose, everything began to transform. I followed the path to become a teacher. I became a youth pastor. And I was also able to start a girls conference here at Harvest. And none of that would have happened if I would have went down my own path. That's what I'm sure of. Yes, hopefully, if I would have took my own personal path, I would have still been involved with Jesus wherever it took me. But who knows? But there are some things I know wouldn't have happened. I would not be speaking tonight to you guys that would have not they wouldn't have been in the cards i wouldn't have had time to do all that i wouldn't have started 
beautiful you here at Harvest. That just wouldn't have happened. I think it would have happened through another form, but it wouldn't have been me. I would not have been your director. And so, when we step into God's purpose for our life and leave our personal purpose behind, great things happen. We get transformed. We get a new identity. And we get up feeling like we have a purpose. So tonight, get up with a purpose. That's my challenge for you. If you realize that you're like Saul, then all you got to do is say, God, I'm here and I want your direction. I need your love in my life and I need your guidance. Come into my heart and let me be used by you. But if you're like, Madison, I already know what I'm doing and it's in God's will, then that is awesome. And I want to challenge you to keep stepping up and stepping by faith into God's purpose for your life. Because there is one thing I can say. You do sacrifice following after God's purpose. But that sacrifice does not equal the reward that comes with it. Because I truly am blessed to be a teacher. I truly am blessed to be your youth pastor. And I'm truly blessed to be director of Beautiful You. So tonight, get up with a purpose and join us this Sunday. We love you guys and we miss you so much. We hope that you're diving into God's word because that's what fills us and that's what drives us. That's what leads us to our purpose. And so I love you guys and just take a couple minutes. Get with whoever is with you. If you're by yourself, that's perfectly fine too. If you need one of us, call us and we will gladly talk and pray with you guys because that's what we're here for and we miss you. We miss seeing you on Wednesday nights. That is something I will never take for granted ever again is hearing y'all laugh and seeing, seeing y'all experience God's presence I will never take that for granted because that's what fuels me as a youth pastor and I miss that and so just know we are here for you we love you take the next couple minutes and pray ask God for your purpose if you do not know it or if you do ask and make sure that it's following his will for your life and I love you guys and I hope to see you Sunday if not continue checking us out online Jacob's supposed to be having a game not tomorrow not so if that's for you hop on Xbox or however y'all do it and we will have a game night tomorrow night. We love you guys and we hope to see you soon. Bye.